This is one of the craziest things I've seen in a while, and no, it's not that Brazilian woman who wheeled a dead man into a bank. Seen here is Right Side Broadcasting host Brian Glenn absolutely befuddled as to why New York City isn't the giant liberal cesspool that he thought it was. I gotta say, I, I, I thought I would see more homeless situation here. I thought I would see a little bit more chaos on the streets. And keep in mind, he is in Lower Manhattan covering the Trump trial. I don't know where exactly the courthouse is, but Lower Manhattan it's like the financial district, it's Wall Street. I don't know what he thought he was gonna find in lower Manhattan. It's full of rich business people. And migrants, as it would turn out, who knew? Migrants in New York City of all places, one of the most international cities on the planet. You can literally see Ellis Island and the Statue of Liberty from lower Manhattan. There's a good chance that Brian Glenn's own ancestors immigrated to the United States from wherever they came from in Europe through New York. But while he didn't see as much chaos on the streets as he expected to, he did see not just Africans, but packs of Africans, West Africans, North Africans, Africans, and Hispanics, large groups of Hispanic males, he said. And I did see in pockets, uh, large groups of Hispanic males, uh, majority, I mean, almost 100% Hispanic males, and also have seen um, a lot of people that have come from West Africa, uh, Northern Africa, uh, in these, in just packs, if you would. So, uh, so just to recap, he was looking for bad things about the city or things that would maybe be scary to his audience members. So he pointed out the mere presence of black and brown people. It's so blatantly racist that I can't believe he kind of got away with it. I gotta say, I, I, I thought I would see more homeless situation here. I thought I would see a little bit more chaos on the streets uh, than what, you know, than from what I've been told. And I didn't see as much as I thought I would. So uh, at least if Mayor, maybe Mayor Eric Adams has uh, cleaned up certain parts of the city, uh, perhaps, or maybe that's been shifted to other areas of the city. But, but where were all the drug addicts and the homeless people? He couldn't find any, so he just figured that they were in some other parts of town. Watching this man rack his brain as to why New York City is actually fine was hard. I would have been embarrassed for him, but to his credit, he did concede a few times that his perception of the city might have been a little off. And look, I'm not trying to say that New York is clean, beautiful, and completely crime-free. It is not. It's a city like every city. It has its nice parts and it has its less nice parts. Yes, it has crime. Yes, it has homeless people. Yes, you will probably see people on drugs. You can still go to New York and have a pleasant time and feel safe while doing it. But for right-wing media, which caters to right-wing people, many of whom live in suburban or rural areas, many of whom have never even been to New York City or a place like it, it's easy to paint these democratically run cities as festering drug dens or whatever. And you made the point that one of the reasons for declining crime is that a lot of these soft on crime prosecutors are either reducing charges, letting people out with no charges, or declining to prosecute more serious crimes. Exactly. I mean, the statistics are only reflective of what is put into the system, right? So if you have a number of prosecutors across the country who are downgrading serious felonies to misdemeanors, it makes it look like violent crime or burglaries like you're seeing on the side of your screen that are taking place aren't really happening. People fear the unknown. And for an audience that typically doesn't venture into big cities, it's not much of a leap to exacerbate an already existing fear. And in the world of politics, linking that fear to voting practices is part of the game. There's a reason why Fox News coverage of crime in cities reduced by half after the midterms in 2022. A poll found that Republicans were much more afraid of U.S. cities like San Francisco, for example, than Democrats, largely because of the narrative coming from Fox News. In a recent segment on Fox, they called San Francisco a trash can. If you don't believe me, you can just talk to your local Trump supporter. I can almost guarantee you that they will have very strong opinions on places they have never been. Of course, none of this is new. This has been a regular talking point for from the right for as long as I can personally remember. And it's everywhere. I saw on Instagram the other day, there was a post about a property in Chicago. It was like an interior design or architecture post, so it had nothing to do with politics. But the comment section was full of right-wingers talking about two bad it's in Chicago. And this particular property happened to be in a very nice and very reputable part of Chicago, but that doesn't matter, I guess. What's funny about this clip with Brian Glenn is that people will often see what they want to see. If you want to look at New York City with your Carrie Bradshaw 
rose colored glasses on, you can do that. You can pretend not to see all of the trash overflowing on the sidewalks. When you take, when you look at just how vile things are here. If you want to look at it through your Fox News lens, and by the way, Fox News and Trump Org are both headquartered in New York, so how bad could it be? Then you can do that too. You will usually find terrible things if you're looking for them, which is why it was particularly satisfying to watch a man in real time try and fail to find terrible things surrounding him. So if you live in New York City, it looks like they're trying to clean this city up a little bit. Look, if you're an unsavvy traveler, you can venture into rough neighborhoods, which again is relative. I mean, if you see packs of Africans and groups of Hispanic men as hostile, then yeah, you might not do well in a city. Maybe it is best for you to stay in your suburban or rural community where you can never ever see anything or anyone that will, God forbid, expand your worldview. And that's the idea. The goal is isolationism. The dream is segregation. The fear keeps people engaged and active. And the dogma is as true as gospel. One last thing I want to point out before I close this, there's an ad for ivermectin running on the side of the screen as Brian Glenn speaking. Maybe I'm sensitive to this because a Trump supporter very recently told me that ivermectin can cure cancer now, but for the people who are so wary of getting got by big whoever, they sure love to get got. All right, that's it for me. If you got anything out of this, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and check out my podcast, Modern Context. Thanks.